Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains, in episode two of our series on the treatment of upper limb ataxia, core stability, and postural correction. When it comes to coordinating our limbs, either the arms or the legs, we need proximal core stability. That is why the research continually shows that core and postural retraining alone can improve upper and lower limb ataxia. In this video, we're gonna walk through some of those research studies, but then also bridge the clinical gap and look at what the actual exercises those participants did so that we can apply them in the clinic and at home. In this case study, the effect of the activation of the core muscles on tremor in a patient with MS they had a 22 year old with right upper extremity ataxia. That individual for one week did training in the contraction of the deep cervical, I'll show you those, and lumbar muscles. Once again, that was for one week. And the results were contraction of the core muscles, reduced postural tremor, and improved upper extremity performance. Therefore, core strengthening should be considered planning treatment of ataxic multiple sclerosis patients. This next study looked at the effect of trunk coordination exercise on dynamic postural control using a core noodle. This was in the Department of Occupational Therapy, and that investigation was to look at the influence of trunk coordination on dynamic postural control relative to postural sway. It did start with some healthy students and then transferred to looking at a stroke patient. To assess their postural sway, they had these participants standing between two circles and assessing their control swing back and forth. That was in standing. They then had those participants do one exercise in laying, working on their core proximal stability, reassessed and found improvements. Despite that the exercise was in laying, they found improvements in their standing postural sway. So what was this one exercise? Well, instead of core noodles, I grabbed some pool noodles and here is Ellie to show us this exercise. This next study is so interesting because it is called a home balance exercise program that improves walking with people with cerebellar ataxia. And what is so interesting is that this study did no walking and yet the participants improved in their walking, showing the power of really working on core stability for dynamic mobility. Now, the exercises that they did were sitting on a firm surface like a chair or a compliant surface like a Swiss ball. Also, standing, holding on, or letting go on a firm surface or compliant like a balance pad. And then stepping, either holding on or letting go. None of those included walking, and yet they improved in their walking. If you want to know what exercises they did in that research study, you can find a link of those in the description below, as well as a 30-day stability for mobility challenge using those evidence-based exercises. This is free. You can find that linked below. This next study is called Physical Therapy for Correcting Postural and Coordination Deficits in Patients with Mild to Moderate Traumatic Brain Injury. They had 22 individuals and they did their exercises laying, sitting, standing, and they did do some walking here. They focused on intra interlimb coordination in the upper and lower extremities, postural stability, and they did do some gait pattern. The results of this showed improved static and dynamic postural stability and gait, reduced truncal upper and lower limb ataxia, really reinforcing the power of proximal stability on upper and lower limb ataxia. So what were the exercises they did? That's a great question. Here, Ellie is here to demonstrate the exercises. First, laying one to two minutes per exercise with a maximum of 10 minutes. Sitting 
in a chair. One to two minutes for each exercise with a maximum of 10 minutes. Sitting on a Swiss ball, one to two minutes for each exercise for a maximum of 10 minutes. Exercises in standing with the feet apart. Two minutes for each exercise with a maximum of 20 minutes. Finally, exercises while walking. Two minutes for each exercise with a maximum of 15 minutes. Now, many of those fantastic research studies really target acquired ataxias, like multiple sclerosis, traumatic brain injuries. But what about progressive degenerative ataxias that affect the entire cerebellum? Well, this is a fantastic study that really investigates that question. The study is called Intensive Coordinative Training Improves Motor Performance in Degenerative Cerebellar Disease. There were 16 individuals that had a progressive ataxia due to cerebellar degeneration. It was four weeks intensive coordinative training. The exercises were supine, quadruped, kneeling, standing, and stepping. And with this program, four weeks, they found significant improvements in motor performance and a reduction of ataxia symptoms observed in their clinical scores. So the conclusion was that in patients with cerebellar ataxia, coordinative training improves motor performance, reduces ataxia symptoms, enabling them to achieve personal, meaningful goals in everyday life. What were the exercises that they did in this study? The participants, to answer that question, I reached out to the physiotherapist from the study, Doris Brooks, who prescribed the exercises. And she helped me come up with a list of them linked in the description below, as well as a video that actually demonstrates the exercises. If you're interested in checking out, there's a free coordinative training program that uses these evidence-based exercises throughout a free program. You can find a link to that in the description below. What are some other ways individuals can improve their core stability for upper lower limb ataxia? Well, to help with that, I created some free 30-day programs that you can find linked in the description below. That includes some great modalities like Tai Chi, Contra Limb Training, and this can be done with home equipment. You can find those linked below. Other fantastic modalities include things like Tai Chi, Yoga, and Pilates to tap into those modalities as well.
For people that are not keen on exercise, a great modality can be exer games, whole body video games. Studies that have looked at exer game based coordinative training or whole body controlled video games have found that the benefit shown in these studies is equal to regaining one or more years of the natural disease progression. They found some of these improvements because games, exer games, involve highly motivated reward incentives interactive exercises with rapidly changing environments, which could simulate and train patients real world activities and anticipatory coordination capacities. Not only that, but exer games can be uh, trained in the home environment. Specific exer games used in these research studies for early stages include Xbox Kinetic Games, Light Race, or 20.0 Leaks. Wii games were physio fun. For less advanced individuals, Wii games such as Tightrope Walk or Ski Slalom and sitting games for Wii include the Penguin Slide, Table Tilt, or Bubble Balance. However, there are other fantastic Exer games available for core stability. Alongside Exer games, virtual reality can be a fantastic mobility for balance training. This particular case study called Virtual Reality Guided Body Balance Training had a male in his 40s. He was a forklift driver and he had a right cerebellar and brainstem infarction. He did three weeks of conventional physical therapy and then was discharged home. Once home, he tapped into virtual reality. He did 40 minutes on weekdays for two weeks. And as a result of those 10 sessions, his trunk sway disappeared clinically. He regained confidence and returned to work after an additional two weeks of physical therapy. So virtual reality guided body balance training can be a therapeutic option for the treatment of cerebellar ataxia. Last, before we finish up this video, we're going to look at how neck and posture exercises can improve upper and lower limb ataxia. This study results of special neck exercises in a patient with cerebellar ataxia and ataxial myoclonus due to ADCK3 mutation. It's a case study of a 19-year-old patient with cerebellar ataxia and myoclonus. She really focused on postural re-education and cervical, more than neck, stabilization. And through that, she found improvements in posture, marked decrease in myoclonus, and significant improvements in fine hand skills, balance parameters, and quality of life were obtained. She found improvements in her balance through the Romberg and Tug improved sleep and energy, increased limit of stability for her balance, reduced visual dependency, proprioceptive disturbance for her balance, and reduced emotional reactions and pain. So the question is why would neck stabilization exercises improve fine motor coordination, balance, and quality of life? Well, believe it or not, the cervical region is rich in proprioceptive receptors, and it provides afferent input, incoming information, and stability. Receptors in the deep neck flexors contribute to positional sense. Atrophy and fat in the cervical muscles, the neck muscles, decreases proprioceptive sensation and spinal reflexes. So what were the actual exercises performed? Focusing on cervical stabilization for anatomical alignment, as well as postural re-education? Well, here's a demonstration of a few. All right, so this is our start. I'm going to tuck that chin. Takeaways by focusing and including the focus on core stability, postural correction, we can improve upper limb ataxia, fine hand motor skills. We can improve lower limb ataxia, coordination, balance, gait, all by really including proximal stabilization.
Our next follow-up video on the treatment is going to focus more on distal limb coordination. Be come back to check that out. If you found this particular video educational, please press that like below this video, subscribe to my channel, and share free resources with others. My link to Patreon is in that description below. And then check out other free educational videos and free home exercise programs here on Little Steps, Big Gains.